This is an interview with Raymond Letter Carpenter. Mr. Carpenter was born on November 11th, 1929 in Middleton, Ohio. Mr. Carpenter served from 1946 to 1969 in Vietnam and the Korean War. Mr. Carpenter achieved the rank of Chief Warrant Officer. This interview is being done on December 3rd in, on, in 259 Quarter Circle. This interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress as part of Da Vinci High School's America at War Project. Okay, so we're going to start this interview with just a few biographical details. Sure. So if you could just talk about where and when you were born. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, I can't tell you much about where, when I was born. Uh... I was pretty young then. <laughs> uh, come on, help me out. You wanted to talk, help me out. You were born in Middletown, Ohio. She's got that. Yeah. And um, you can talk about what jobs your parents had, how many siblings you had. Oh, I had two two sisters. Uh, both older than I, and uh, they both passed away, and uh, my parents are both passed away. Tell them what your dad did. Pardon me? Tell them what your dad my, did. My father was a contract worker for the postal department. He, he didn't work in a post office, but he bought himself a truck and uh, it's sort of like using the truck for his, his work and he made every train that came in through town and then there wasn't a heck of a lot of them in that town. <laughs> and what, would, what did he do with, when he met the train? Oh, he he uh, he would go in the, the truck, and sometimes I would go with him and help him. And I couldn't even hardly carry one of those bags, <laughs> but uh, I, I'd help him drag him into the post office, and we turned him over to the post office, and then we're finished with that. And then he'd go home to his mother and, and eat pie all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Did any of your family members um, serve in the military? Uh, I had a brother-in-law that was also in the Navy. And in fact, I, I left and went with him uh, to the recruiting office. And he, uh, he said he... he thought that I should have a uniform, and I said, I think so too. And he took one of his uniforms, and he, he likes to sew. And he tailored that thing for me, and boy, it was a perfect fit. And I had it for years and years. But I don't have that uniform anymore, and it's a little old. <laughs> So, um, do you want to talk about why you chose the Navy? I always wanted to be a sailor. I wanted to go to sea. And then I did that. I spent all those years at sea. What kind of training went into being in the Navy? Training? Well, first of all, we had... Uh, about uh, three months of uh, orientation of what the Navy's about and what you're going to learn and, and what you're going to do and who you're going to do it for and all of those things. Uh, it was a it was a very interesting three months, and uh, I was very 
happy when I got out of that three months training because then I went aboard a ship. Was that what they call basic training? Basic training. Only three months? That's right. Mm. And that, all the other services are the same thing. Could you describe the basic training you um, um, had to go through during orientation? Well, uh, everybody that goes uh, in into basic training uh, learns all the things that the military figures that they need to know to to be able to do the thing that the Navy wants them to do. And no longer what you want to do to yourself. But uh, we were, after I got out of basic training, I was uh, selected to uh, take um, a lot of training in various types of uh, work. And uh, that was what brought me up as high as I could go. It was a it was a wonderful time. I loved every minute of it. But in basic training, you had a lot of physical things to master, right? I don't know. I understand what you mean. Well, like they had you marching and learning. Well, yeah, we we had to learn to march. We had to learn to uh, shoot ammunition out of a rifle and ammunition out of a forty-five automatic and uh, anything that you had to be issued to to. Uh, protect yourself if you went into some combat area and uh, you carried it with you. It wasn't easy either. <laughs> it was bigger than I was. Uh, I, I was uh, trained on a uh, an Ooh. I'm trying to think of the the weapons. Um, I was trained on the the rifle, which was an M1. Now it's called an M16 because they have developed over the years, and they're a lot more, uh, lot a lot more dangerous to the enemy than uh, anything else. And uh, I also trained on uh, uh, sub submachine machine gun and uh, I never liked that. It just shakes you that you like that. And I don't know whether I ever hit anything or not with that. But I did pretty good with the, with the uh, a rifle and a pistol. Uh, what else? Anything else you think of? Um, before you had been on the boat in the Navy, had you just been on any boat before? I was never on a a boat per se. I was always on ships. Oh. <laughs> Had you ever gone out to sea before the Navy? I I think I I think I went out Oh sure. I I went out uh I went to sea with that, with never having been on a ship before. I went to sea and, and I went for a, a, 
a rather long period of time. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was always training. You never, not a day went by that you weren't training in something. What she's asking, Raymond, is did you ever go out on a ship before you went in the Navy to see what it was like? It seems to me that that I did. I, w I went out on a a civilian ship, and uh, I think that helped a lot in my decision to become a sailor. Um, how did you adapt to military life? Like, how was the food? Did you meet any people? I found the food personally uh, to be excellent and I ate everything I could get my hands on and uh, one of the first things that I, I, I did after I got on a ship was to meet the cooks and make friends with them and, and whenever I wanted something I would get it. <laughs> I know this is not the kind of stuff you want to know. <laughs> no. Um, so, would you like to describe the first time you kind of went into real combat? Yes, I can tell you immediately. I was in Korea on a ship and uh, they declared war on the United States. And we promptly fired up the burgers on the ship and got out of there. And when we came back, we came back with a, a large group of ships. And uh, I never was injured in, in any way from combat. Uh, I was very fortunate at that because it was it was difficult not to get shot at. Well, I was shot at, but uh, in my specialty field, uh, I was trained as an engineer, and I uh, ultimately, I retired as a, a specialist in, in engineering, and uh, when I say specialist, I don't mean that in the concept that I'm very adept at it. But I had to learn all that, those things, and uh, many times that, that we would have to be uh, taken off the ship and go into uh, some type of of uh, what do you call it. go into some type of problem area and you would overtake the persons who were doing it and we would put them down and uh, I never shot one. I mean, I never, I never shot a person, and uh, the reason for that is that that I, my job, took me to other things, that uh, of war, and so my whole life in the navy was like that. But why 
what, tell them what you mainly did in, when you were on the ship. You were down in the... Oh, well, I was, I was, uh, I became an engineer and, and then I, I advanced over the years. But honey, tell them what that meant to be an engineer. You weren't up on top of the ship, you were down in... I was in the engine room. Right. The, our, our ships, uh, our main engines on the ship was about the size of half of this room. And uh, I, I was uh, maintained those engines to a certain extent uh, until we could find civilian specialists that could come in and give us assistance with them. But the, we, we still had to do our own repairs. Anything, anything we had to repair, uh, you just got the, 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 the manual out for that piece of equipment. And you read up on it, and you find out what was wrong with it, and then you repair it. What was some of the like most damage you've ever witnessed on a ship? You you take that picture back. Mm -hmm. I could show her the picture. Uh, you know the difference between the front and the back of a ship. Yeah. The front's the bow. bow. Yeah, and then the stern. And the stern oh. is at the end. And uh, oh, boy. Were any of your ships ever damaged that you were on? Any other ship? Any of the ships damaged? Oh yeah, some of the ships were managed, uh, damaged. We we came out of uh, we came out of Korea with one ship that had... Don't I have a ship down here, honey? There's one in the third picture. Oh, here, here. This, this is two ships. You see, that they've got similar numbers. This is uh, the first one made, and then this was the second one made, and I don't know how many others were made after that. But this was one of the ships that I was on, and uh, uh, my working space, this is the gangway right over here where you go up to get on the ship, and then you, you, you get on, in on the first deck, and you go down from there for whatever your reason you're going aboard. And uh, were any of the ships damaged, honey? I'm talking. I'm talking about other ships. When I talk about damage, we never got shot at. So you were never on a ship that got hit by a bomber. Anything? No. No. Well, I think we did. I think we had a bomb that, that hit, and then uh, the gunner's mates went up and uh, took all the things out that would cause it to explode. I can't tell you what they were; they're secret. How difficult was your job being an engineer? Well, I began as uh, an apprentice, and uh, I had a young 
chief warrant officer came aboard, and for some reason or another, he took a liking to me. So he started training me, and I worked with him a lot. Uh, he was one of my superiors, and uh, he taught me most of the things that I knew that, that I had to, had to become knowledgeable of. And if I got to the place where uh, I needed to have schooling for uh, a higher element of, of uh, training, uh, they would send me to school. And I had, I had, while I was in there over 22 years, I, I, uh, I went to a lot of classes, and, and I was taught a lot of excellent uh, knowledge. Man, I don't know, does that help you in any way? Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's typical of, of just about any uh, Anyone, but then after uh, so long a time, I I had advanced out of that and was uh, uh, promoted to this warrant officers area, and uh, my whole life changed from that. We had. Uh, uh, better quarters than the enlisted men, and uh, more responsibility. We had to train them, and it's just like any other job. You train the people that don't have any experience at it, and that was. Uh, that was a big part of, of my duties, was training. Uh, I was an instructor for many years, and uh, I would hold classes both ashore and, and on a ship, and uh, teach others the things that others had te taught me. And. It's not an easy life as far as, it's, it's like going to school again. And it, only it's a little bit more serious schooling than, than what you get if you, you know, got out of high school and got a job. I don't know how else I can define that. Um, what were you doing doing during the Vietnam War? In the Vietnam War, hiding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm serious. Uh, I have been in Korea for a long time, and uh, when the Korean War ended. Uh, uh, I was sent to Vietnam, and uh, went into all kinds of things that you had to learn that you never were put in front of you before. You're always in the military. You're always learning, and, and it's it's good. It helped me all my life. I loved it. I'm one of the few <laughs> that love it. Did your ships do some shooting in Vietnam from the bombardment? Sure, bombardment. We would sit off of the, the off of the the beach, the shore of the beach, and we would 
set off maybe three, four, five miles, and we would bombard the beach. And we would uh, also, we the ships that I were on were mostly for carrying other men, and we would carry uh, Army, Marine Corps, uh, everywhere we went. And they would get off and, and they go do the fighting. Thank God. <laughs> so was there any kind of like rivalry between Navy people and, mili and Army? Well, not really. Uh, they all knew that they were uh, there for the same purpose. And they either made it or they didn't make it. If they didn't make it, they couldn't re-enlist. You can, you can imagine what it'd be like to be on a ship that size. This, these two ships here were all these things here are, were used for lifting and put bringing on the ship or taking it off the ship or something like that. And uh, on those two types of ships, uh, I didn't like particularly the things that I had to do. Because I like to do things with my hands, and, and being an engineer, I, I like to work on uh, pumps and engines and all that kind of thing. <laughs> um, hmm. Did you ever step foot in Vietnam? Did I ever what? Step foot in Vietnam? Did I ever set foot in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, I was in the, in the city. I don't know what the city's name was, but I was in the state of Vietnam. Uh, and it was disastrous. Uh, they didn't seem to have the uh, the, the, the they didn't seem to have the ability to run their own country, and uh, that's why you you'll read in the newspapers that the military go to country to country to country, and they go there. And they teach these guys how they should run their country. And uh, maybe they don't do it after we leave, but if they don't, then they probably will go under. <laughs> That's about all I can tell you on that. What was your opinion on the war? Like, did you agree with our government's decision to go into Vietnam? Yes, I, I, I think so, because uh, uh, they started the fight, and then we had to defend ourselves. I never had to defend myself. I was always hidden down underneath the ship. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was my duty station. I ran the engineering spaces, and all of the uh, younger engineers that come up through the ranks, uh, they would work for me, and I would train them and things like that. Okay. Did you meet anybody who was involved in that first attack? from the Viet Cong. I think it was on the U.S. Maddox. Maddox? It was a yeah, it was a ship. 
and the Viet Cong attacked that ship, and that was why Johnson... That, that's one of the reasons that it started up, yeah. So did you ever meet anybody who was there or was involved? I don't think I ever went aboard any of those ships uh, unless it was for to help them engineer-wise to, to maintain their equipment, something of that nature. Because it was a destroyer, right? The U.S. Maddox? Maddox? No, the, 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 maybe the Maddox was a destroyer. Uh, I was on the, the Radford, and that's the ship that she brought out. You did bring it out, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And that's a destroyer. And they are fighters. They, that's their prime duty, is to fight and defend. Hmm. Um, how did you stay in touch with your family and friends who are civilians? The same way other people do. <laughs> letters <laughs> and lots of them <laughs> and I, I had uh, I, I had a good position where I, I could use a telephone call uh, right from the ship at sea and I could call my parents there. Um, did you keep a journal or a diary? No. I, I never even thought about that. Do you remember anybody personally who was there with you? Anybody that I knew that personally? Personally. Well, I happened to be walking down the street in uh, Tokyo, and uh, I saw this young fellow walking down the street and, and he looked familiar. I went up to him and I says, don't I know you? Where are you from? And he says, I'm from Middletown, Ohio. And he was from that little city that I lived in. I think we had about 40,000 people was the most. And uh, he and I got to be uh, uh, pretty close and, and whenever he was a, around he would stop in and visit with me and I'd have him in for lunch and uh, it was a, it was a nice uh, experience for them because uh, they were mostly enlisted men and their lunches in a, a great big hall with lots of chairs and and uh, benches and tables and and young new sailors to serve them <laughs> whereas I, I uh, after I became an officer uh, I went to what we called the wardroom and that now the wardroom is is uh, spaces only for officers and uh, we have our own staterooms, and when some of our men need us, they call us on the telephone, and they say, can I come up and ask about so-and-so? And, -so? and uh, we would always allow them to come up into our, our space. And if we couldn't help them out, well, some other officer in, in the wardroom would be able to do that. So. Um, what kind of stuff would you guys do for fun on the ship? What's that? What kind of stuff for recreation on the ship? I don't know whether I should tell them or not. <laughs> we we didn't have much recreation on the ship. We we had on all navy ships they have a recreation space and they have all kinds of things that you would 
expectancy and uh, they would utilize those and they'd have to uh, uh, put their name on a list and then as their time came up on it, they, they would get their, that time in that space and, and that's it. Did you guys have a television? <laughs> I don't believe they were born yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the invention time. <laughs> uh, later on, we did get televisions, but we had to buy them ourselves. If we wanted the television, we would get together, make a pull, pull. No, that's not the right word, is it? Pool. 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 Pool, yeah. And uh, uh, we would contribute our monies and, and whatever else was needed to uh, buy our own television sets. And just about every uh, department on the ship had their own... <laughs> We have cats. <laughs> this is my baby. <laughs> He's just a little thing. Um, so you left the Navy in 1969, right? Yes. Do you want to talk? Could you describe kind of readjusting back to civilian life and? Well. I didn't really want to get out. I wanted to stay in. I wanted to stay in 30 years. Uh, but uh, I guess I just got to the place where I had had enough. And so I, I uh, put in a request to be uh, discharged. And so I got sent back to the United States and went home. <laughs> well, his family and kids needed him. Pardon me? Your family and children needed you. Well, that's true. I didn't need them, though. <laughs> I had everything I wanted on the ship. <laughs> um. How did your wartime experience affect your life? I don't know how to answer that. It, it, it didn't affect my... how I respond to things. Uh, I responded on the, on the spot. If something uh, crashed or or broke down, uh, I don't. I don't think I ever really had a job that I broke. I never really had a job after I got out of the navy, did I? Yes, honey. What? You worked for QED. Oh, you went. You worked for QED, and you went back out on ships. Oh yeah, yeah. I I went on. And I, I went. I went to work for a company that uh, they maintain ships, and uh, they hired me as a. Uh, I don't know what you'd call me. I didn't do any anything really. Uh, you did the planning for the overhaul. Of well, the ship. I did. I did planning. Yeah. Uh, I knew everything about a ship, <laughs> and 
If somebody needed help, I, I was glad to help them. It was fun for me. A team would go out on the ship. Pardon me? A team of you would go out on the ships well, that's, to work with the... That's true. We would go out as a team and uh, inspect the ships and see what they needed to have done and, uh, and maintenance type of things and uh, we would help them to take care of it. And we literally helped them by our hands. And uh, we, we didn't just go in and say, well, fix this generator. We would go in there and get a wrenching it in there and tear it down mm -hmm. and check, see what was wrong with it and put it back together again. And new equipment, new parts in it. And they always seem to run per pretty good. <laughs> Some of my ships are still working. <laughs> um, well, I don't have any more questions, okay. so I guess we're done. One, one other thing, that picture that I had her brought, bring out, I wanted you to see what it looked like for a, a, a ship under fire. and. It's planes all over the place and uh, guns being shot at each other and and uh, it it's not a it's not a hard life but it's uh, you you have to really put yourself into it and. And I loved it. Yeah, that, 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 that's just about all I can wrap it up and say. I keep sad telling my wife I'd like to go back in, but she won't let me. <laughs> Neither will the Navy, for that matter. Did you ever face any ground combat when you were in Vietnam? Any what? The like combat on the ground? Like, feet, like in the field? Rather well, than I, I, nev I never gone into combat. Uh, I would be involved in it, but uh, that wasn't my job, was, you know. My, my job was more uh, technical. What do you call it? Well, not not just technical. It's uh, uh, to make things happen. Uh, enlist, enlisted men get trained to operate and maintain equipment that they uh, are assigned to. And if they don't have the experience, then they send them to school. And when they get out of school, they come back and, and they are well trained. Okay. I, don't, I can't think of anything more. That was perfect. Thank you so much. Pardon me? That was perfect. Thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you can remember. <laughs> <laughs>